You might know someone who would rather fight their way out of a situation. Someone who would rather choose brawn over brains. But how far will brute strength bring you? The same question goes for the man in today's episode. Let's dive in. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, where we share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the art form of audio drama. Yes, and that includes sound effects. I'm Timothy Gregory, bringing you the true story of a man who, despite his grandmother's warnings, delved deep into a life of crime. We'll see what ignoring her advice did for his life on today's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. Also, you want to stick around because later we are going to give the rest of you an opportunity to enter yet another sweepstakes drawing for a prize. No, it is not a cash prize, but it is a prize, and I think it's a prize that you are really going to like if we draw your name. But first, let's get to it, folks. The classic true story of Ken Edwards. Help me with this thing. It's heavy. Okay, uh, uh, right about over here, all right? Why in the world did we knock over a dairy office? <laughs> there better be lots of moolah in that box. <laughs> ah, quiet. You'll see. There's a payroll inside. Let's get it. Hold the light. And the chisel. How hard do I hit it? Hard as you can. It's a strong box. <laughs> well, look at that. Cartwheels. Cartwheels? Silver simoleons. They're doing some kind of publicity stunt, making change with silver dollars. Let's get it in the car. Ace, can you lift this thing? That weighs three or four hundred pounds. We'll have to divide it up. This is stupid. Yeah, stupid or not, it's money. Let's get her out of here. The man in our story was born in Asheville, North Carolina. Son of a successful building contractor who went bust during the land boom of the 20s. He had several aliases, but this is the classic true testimony of Ken Edwards, right now on Unshackled. In high school at 14, I determined I'd get my hands on as much money as quickly as I could. Before I turned 16, I'd develop a business of my own that turned a handy profit. It was during the Prohibition era and I found an enterprise I could easily manage. I even taught my classmate, Tom, how to help. You see, Tom, you, you just set these square bottles down in the cardboard box. Nobody sees what you got till they get up close. And the square bottles don't rattle. Or take up much room. See, a gallon of booze cost me about two and a half bucks. I water it down, pour it in these little half-pint squares, sell them for a buck a piece. Man, that's making a profit. Yeah, and we don't pay no tax kids at the prom, they're wanting to do something on the wild side anyway. <laughs> oh, well, this ought to loosen them up. Yeah, so most of them can't take it, get woozy, but we get our profit and get out, right? Right. Okay, uh, you work this side of the street, and I'll set up over there. That you, Kenneth? Yes, um. It's pretty late, son. Yes, um. Thought you'd be in bed. Tried not to wake you. When your folks are away, Kenneth, the least I can do is stay up and make sure you're in safe. Okay. Okay, now I I'm safe. You can go to bed. You're in, Kenneth. But I'm not so sure you're safe. What do you mean, Grandma? You've been drinking, Kenneth. I can smell it. I can hear it. Well... Just a little. In my day, we'd have said you're drunk. Well, that was your day. This is my day. <laughs> Sit down a minute, Kenneth. Grandma, I I'm tired. It's late. I know. But I love you, son. And I may not have another chance to talk to you about this. Grandma, I... Just this once. It won't take long. Oh, all right. Kenneth. In my life, I've seen a lot of people and observed ones like you. Everyone I've ever known 
has come to ruin down a long, hard road. Oh, Grandma. I love you too much to let that happen to you without giving you what I can in the way of my experience. Kenneth, when a man lets his temper get the best of him, as I've seen you do, and when he lets drink overrule his mind, he is headed for deep, deep trouble. Now, I really doubt if I can say anything that will turn you away from the course you're on, but this much I can give you as a last resource. When you finally come to the end of yourself... Grandma, it's late. I'm tired. Kenneth, you'll be much older and much wearier when you get to the place where you'll heed the counsel I'm giving you now. It is this. When you've lost everything, all your money, your friends, your self-confidence, then, Kenneth, when you've come to the end of yourself, call on my Godson. Call on Jesus Christ. He has said, Whosoever will may come. And he promises those who call upon him, he will in no wise cast out. Grandma, I... Someday you'll I... need him, son. Someday you're going to need Jesus desperately. I don't need to tell you that that didn't go very far with me. Didn't change my course one degree. I kept right on with my bootlegging and drinking. And of course, trouble followed. Now, I was a fairly big strapping guy at 18. Played a lot of high school football because of my size, and nobody wanted to argue with me. One day, realizing my profits were way down and some of my booze was missing, I surprised my helper, Tom. So, where you been, Tom? Oh, whew. <laughs> you surprised me there, Ken. I didn't see you back there in the shadows. You probably didn't see me when you carried out some of the booze, either. Uh, I was just gonna make a delivery, Ken. Oh, yeah? Where were you taking him? Oh, uh, down to... to... O'Leary's. Oh, he, he told me he ran out and he needed some more. I handle all the deliveries, Tom. I, I just wanted to help out. And help yourself, too. No, 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 Ken, I swear. Swearing ain't gonna get you anywhere, Tom. It's time I taught you a lesson when you won't forget for stealing my booze. I won't. I, 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 no, 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 Ken, I... Oh. Oh. And I think this boot oh. signs off ah. our partnership. <laughs> I was pretty sure I'd kill Tom with the beating I gave him. And that was the end of my educational career and started my life on the run, riding the rails. Like a lot of other guys in the Depression, I ended up in Los Angeles. Now, I found a job as a fry cook in a big restaurant. To get the real picture here, you need to remember, i have been picked for my size to play football in high school. We had a bouncer in the bar who was billed as the assistant manager. Everyone working there knew his main job was to keep order and eject any unruly guests. We got along just fine. And every time he came through the kitchen, he had a greeting. Hey, kid. How's business tonight? I don't know. I'm stuck back here amongst the pots and pans. You're the guy that sees the customers, Pug. Yeah, such customers. Got a table full of real jerks out there tonight, kid. Big night on the town. Been giving them trouble since they sat down. Are you scared of them, Pug? Are you scared? Nah. But they might be a problem if they all ganged up at once. Okay. Holler if you need help, Pug. Listen, if they act up, I'll need all the help I can get. A half hour later, a ruckus broke out. Pug yelled, hey, Rube, a cry for help in those days, and the fight spilled into the street. I was having the time of my life during the whole thing. Afterwards, Pug came by to thank me. You're pretty handy with the mitts, kid. Uh, you too, Pug. Call me anytime. Yeah? Well, there's somebody else out there calling you now. Yeah? Who? Oh. Never mind for now. If he wants you to know it, He'll tell you. He's got connections around here. He saw how you work tonight and wants to make you a little proposition. The guy with connections was quiet, dapper, and a bit deadly, I thought. It seems like he took care of all the slots all over L.A. 
He needed a big kid to go around and make collections. But first, I had to pass a little test. It seems his slots were getting slugged, and he wanted me to put a stop to it. See, kid, these guys been slugging our machines all over the place. We go to collect them, what do we find? Slugs. They need a lesson. From what I see, you're a pretty good teacher. One of my guys will put the finger on the ringleader. All you gotta do is give him the same treatment I seen you give them jerks tonight. Here, take this 40 for a down payment on the C note you'll get for the whole job. You'll get the rest when the job is over. Well, now I shifted into the gambling scene. I worked in that world for a while, even became a blackjack dealer. But I learned one thing, get all the money up front. I never saw the rest of that C note. Funny, it reminded me of a Sunday school teacher at the church where grandma used to take me. Seems like every time I was there, this teacher would repeat these scriptures. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Now, I began to see how it worked. You cheat, you get cheated. Still, I had a lot to learn. Folks, we'll get back to Ken's story in just a moment. But first, I want to share a bit about how our ministry is able to bring hope to people all over the world. Unshackled is now in its 71st year of spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of, well, supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, as you can hear, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we're able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link, if there's one where you're listening, or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org. That's unshackledpodcast.org. Dot org and then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check, unshackled, we take checks. You mail that check to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. We thank you for your partnership in our ministry. And now back to the classic true story of Ken Edwards. This gambling scene was a different lifestyle for me, but I continued to do whatever it took to keep up with the expectations of others. Quit bugging me about the measly money. You want to make some really big dough? Only if I get paid up front. Okay, okay, already. This is big time. You think you're ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Meaner than a bear. This needs smarts, kid. And I think you got it. Okay. What is it? Just working with the best. Best what? Best safe cracker in the Midwest. I don't know nothing about cracking safes. You can learn, man. You can learn. He's getting together a team, just four guys, and he needs a lifter, somebody with muscles and brains. Interested? Maybe. Need to know more. Harvey will tell you the rest. He needs to know your name. If I'm going for the big time, way outside the law, maybe I'll get myself a new one. How about Kane? <laughs> yeah, Ace Kane. I've often wondered why I picked that name. Perhaps a vague memory out of Sunday school again. Kane, the one who killed his brother Abel. Just a fragment of memory. Kane responds to God after the murder. Am I my brother's keeper? I should be my brother's keeper, but I'm not. Why? I lived totally on the other side of the law for years. We hit grocery stores and especially chains through Texas, Wyoming, Arizona, Colorado, and a, a bunch of others, even into Indiana. About 60% of our jobs were done at gunpoint. We even knocked over a couple of small banks, but we wanted to keep the feds off our trail. The guy who planned it all was smart, but we hit one place that was our undoing. 
the dairy with all the coins. It was one of the dumber things we ever did. With four guys in the car, all that silver, our tools, guns, baggage, we blew bulk rear tires out before we made 50 miles. Ended up dumping a bunch of coins in the ditch. Couldn't risk passing them, and it got us into the counterfeiting business, which was even dumber. It just don't sound right. Well, we'll have to make it sound right. So how do you do that? You go to the library. You get a book on metals and figure it out. You got brains. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Just do it. So, I'm elected to go to the library in this podunk town and research making coins clink realistically. And at least the librarian was helpful. I'm looking for some books on metallology. <laughs> do you possibly mean metallurgy? Whatever, I guess. Uh, whatever it takes to make good coins. I see. Okay, let's check. Uh, I see there's a book of rare coins. Can I see that one? Let me see. Um, oh, looks like it's checked out right now. Here's a postcard. If you give me your name and address, I'll be glad to notify you when it comes back. Seems like a lot of extra trouble for you. Oh, no, 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 not at all. That's what I'm here for, to be helpful. Once again, I proved how stupid criminals can be. The Treasury Department, getting wind of our fake half dollars, sent out flyers to the libraries in the area, thinking the criminals might look for books about coins and medals. Within 24 hours, we had a visit from Secret Service, the Treasury Department Anti-Counterfeiting Group. The judge took pity on me, I guess. My three cohorts, who all had criminal records, went up the river. But since my offense was the first on my record, I got off with five years probation. Did I learn anything from that? Not much. I worked my way back east doing little jobs for small time crooks. Kenneth, in my life I've seen a lot of people and observed ones like you. Everyone I've ever known has come to ruin down a long, hard road. Grandma's memory and her words made me think about my past, affecting my sleep. Often I would wake with the memory of her and her words of warning. You'll be much older and much wearier when you get to the place where you'll heed the counsel I'm giving you now. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long road, all right. When you come to the end of yourself, call on God, son. Call on Jesus. He said, whosoever will may come. He will in no wise cast you out. Yeah, long road, very tired. I'm tired, tired, tired of it all. In Batavia, New York, I won $69,000 at the crab's table. <laughs> Easy come, easy go. I gave away the odds 665 in tips to the stick man and other casino employees. I see you had yourself a lucky night, Ace. Yeah, pretty lucky. You looking for somebody? Guess you don't remember me. Your face looks familiar. Yeah, we worked together out in L.A. years ago. Jatsy. Oh, yeah, now I remember. Jatsy, we, we, we worked the slots together. Right! Well, uh, I've been down on my luck lately. Yeah, me too. Till now. Yeah. Uh, maybe I thought you might spread a little of that good cheer my way. I thought so. Not just a loan, I'll pay it back. As soon as I get on my feet. Yeah, I've heard that a lot. No, no, I mean it. Come on, I'll pay it back, honest. How much you need? Just a grand. Just a grand? You got hoospa, chats. Look, I swear I'll pay you back soon, honest. You got a swag there. Well, I've been down on my luck too, but okay. Here, and don't spend it all on booze. Ha <laughs> ha, good old Ace always comes true. Yeah, well just remember, they call me Ace Kane. 
Don't forget it. I'll be looking for it back. Right, Ace. I'll have it back to you soon. Soon, you'll see. Took me just six months to blow through my winnings. Totally. Not a sign of Chatsy and my thousand bucks. Things got tough for me, and although I'd let thousands slip through my fingers, that grand rankled me, ate at me, inside. My connections with the underworld weakened to the point I had to take regular employment. Me. I hadn't been on a payroll since my high school days. Now I'm back punching a clock. Then, an industrial accident. Well, he's stable for now. Can you hear me? Uh, I'm in the hospital, I, I guess. That's right. With chemical burns. Oh, girlfriend borrowed my new car. Wrecked it. Got to stand trial as accessory to a killing back in my safe cracking days. Oh. Ah. Yeah, you try and get some rest, son. I'll check on you later. What was the warning Grandma gave me? Kenneth, when you've come to the end of yourself, call on my God, son. Call on his son, Jesus. He has said, whosoever will may come. And he promises those who call upon him, he will in no wise cast out. Repent of your sins. He'll save you. Call on him. Call on him? Grandma, how do I call on him? Over time, I left New York and worked my way to Gainesville, Florida. And there on the street, I met him. Chatsy. The guy who owed me a thousand bucks. Hey! Hey, you! You calling me? Oh, oh, uh, hi, uh, hi, Ace. Yeah, it's me, Ace, Ace Kane. Remember Kane? Pay me my grand. I will, I, I will, Ace. Bet you will, right now. I, I don't have it, Ace. Uh, not right now, but I'll get it. You're gonna get it, all right. I'm gonna collect right now. I can't, Ace, just a little longer. I've been waiting, chats. Here's my answer. Go! <laughs> I don't have it now, Ace. I'll, I'll get it. Oh. 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 Hey, cut it out. Take it easy. Oh. Ace, take it oh. easy. Oh. Oh. My name's Kane, remember? Ace Kane. And I'm paying off. Edwards, Kane, whatever you call yourself. Yeah. Got somebody here to see you. Don't want to see nobody. I'm an attorney, sent by the court. To see me? Well, I didn't send for nobody. Everybody's got a right to a lawyer. Ah, oh, shut up. Officer, let me speak to him privately. When he thought the man he beat was gonna die, he said, good. That's the kind of egg you're dealing with here. I'm aware of that. Now if you'll just leave us alone. Okay. Watch him. He near killed that guy. They told me I killed Chatsy. Not so. They took him off the critical list this morning. So why the cop come in here and tell me? Hard to say. Maybe just wanted to see you sweat. Well, he was disappointed. Name's George Lawson. Here's my card. Uh, judge's office sent me here. Said you need a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I do. Anyone tell you I'm broke? I know that. So, uh, what is your name? You gave him several. Yeah, well, they call me Ace, sometimes Kane. The real name's Ken Edwards. Okay, Ken. Uh, looks like you do need representation, and the court pays for it if you can't. Near as I can find out, you're a man without a friend anywhere here, and uh, nowhere to turn. Yeah, that's pretty much right. Uh, I got a grandmother, but she's in heaven. My mother's still living north of here. Okay. Well, let's see what we can do for you. 
What's this little fish on your car? Oh, uh, that's a symbol that reminds me that Jesus told his disciples that they would become fishers of men. I'm saved, and that's my purpose in life, too. Are you a Christian, Ken? My grandmother tried to make me one. My mom, too, I guess. But I don't go to church, if that's what you mean. No, that's not what I mean. Jesus came into the world to die for sinners so that we could have eternal life. In John chapter 3, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Ken, we must repent of our sins, believe that he died for us, and ask him to save us. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We'll talk about it more if you want, as soon as I get the details for your legal problems. That night, in the cell by myself, I had a lot to think about. The attorney, George Lawson, explained getting saved to me, being born again. I was sure looking for help. His words reminded me again of my grandma so long ago. When you've lost everything, all your money, your friends, your self-confidence, then when you come to the end of yourself, call on God. Call on His Son, Jesus. He has said, whosoever will may come. And He promises those who call upon Him, He will in no wise cast out. Dear God, I, I, I don't know just how to do this. Both Grandma and that lawyer, George, said, if, if I call on you, you won't cast me out. Lord, you know everyone else has turned away. I don't deserve no better. I don't have anyone to go to but you. They, they say, if I repent of my sins and ask you to save me, that you will. God, George gave me this card. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Oh God, I do repent of my sins, and I believe you died to save me. I believe. Please save me, dear Jesus. Ken Edwards repented of his sins and walked out of that jail. The man he had assaulted refused to press charges and he was set free. John chapter 8 verse 36 says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. In time, Ken obtained a university degree and later went to Bible college so that he could teach God's Word. For many years, he worked full-time with a youth ministry in Chicago, counseling young men and women in trouble with the law. Ken Edwards' new life demonstrates the certainty of God's promise, I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten. Ken is in heaven now, saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, who extends his mercy to all who confess their sins, repent, and sincerely call upon Him for salvation. In the book of the prophet Jeremiah, God says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Dear friend, no one is beyond the reach of God's mercy. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Won't you call upon Him now? If you need help in making this crucial decision, get in touch with us here at Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607, or call 1-888-NEED-HIM. Now, we love hearing from our listeners here on the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, so send us your questions and we'll answer them here. It can be something you're curious about or just something you want to share with us. All you have to do is write us at 
podcast at unshackled.org or call and leave us a message at 312-281-1264. We'd love to hear from you. Now, before we get to our sweepstakes drawing info, I just want to remind you to subscribe or like our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. You can even share it or tell a friend. We'd also love for you to review or rate our podcast, and don't forget to check out our other podcasts on this same platform, Unshackled Daily Devotionals and Unshackled In Person. We appreciate your input and involvement in our ministry. And again, please consider supporting us so we can freely offer quality Christian programming to the world. All right, the prize for this new sweepstakes contest is another beautiful wooden scripture plaque. The verse on this one is Psalm 34, 1, which says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Folks, this is a gorgeous little thing, especially if you're looking for daily inspiration from scripture. You will love this authentic wooden plaque. The plaque has been sawn from a tree branch or log and cut in such a way to retain as much of the bark around the perimeter as possible. And this one's even got some extra character, as it looks like a knot from the tree was sawn off with it. If you'd like a peek at this scripture plaque, you're welcome to visit our podcast website, unshackledpodcast.org, and stop by the audio drama page for a picture. Unfortunately, folks, we are only able to mail this plaque to locations within the United States. So our drawing is limited to U.S. addresses. But if you reside in the U.S., all you have to do is enter our sweepstakes drawing. It's called 312-281-1264 or email podcast at unshackled.org and give us your name, phone number, and email. Again, give us your name, your phone number, and your email. The winner of the sweepstakes for this beautiful scripture plaque will be announced September 19th, but the deadline for entry is September 3rd. We look forward to hearing from you. And next time... Hey, Billy, I got a job for you. What's that, Johnny? You take this $100 bill and go to that building over there, and inside are two guys. They're going to give you a package, okay? Trust doesn't come easily to those who've been deeply hurt. You got the package? Yeah, and I almost got killed in there. I don't care if you kill me now. I am never going to do another drug deal for you ever again. The man in this story was so traumatized at the age of 12, he didn't want to forgive. He wanted revenge. I dealt with difficulty by tapping into the reservoir of rage within me. I would beat the living daylights out of anyone who crossed me. Then he took the biggest step of trust ever. How can you love a man who was crucified 2,000 years ago? Honey, Jesus loves you. When are you going to realize that? The true testimony of Bill Reeser. Another true dramatization coming soon on Unshackled. Heard in this true story of Ken Edwards were Stephen Spencer, Trish Elliott, Brian Plaharchik, Dave Kappas, and Tom Geich. Original music, Caleb Tolleson. Sound effects, Martin Robinson. Recording engineer, David Pierczynski. Audio engineer, Michael Kahn. Script, Jack O'Dell. That's it for this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory, your brother in Christ.